So in today's episode, I'll be showing you guys how to easily shoot a hyperlapse using any camera that you have around and then editing it in post to create a boomerang effect. And if you guys like this type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so that whenever I post a new video, you guys will be notified. So I shot my first hyperlapse the other day and I was surprised at how fairly easy it was to do it, especially when you have the right tools in front of you. If you're not familiar with what a hyperlapse is, it is similar to a time lapse, but instead of staying put in the same spot, you're creating motion by moving the camera a short distance in every shot. So let's get right to the shooting portion of this tutorial. What you're going to need is any camera you have laying around that you can manually change the settings on so you can control the outcome of your photos. I'll be using my Sony a7 III with a wide 24mm lens. The first thing I'm going to do is change some settings on my camera to make the process a lot easier. I will set my camera to manual mode, like I mentioned earlier, I want to be able to fully control how it comes out. I will also turn on some type of grid to help me shoot the subject in the hyperlapse and keep it at the same point. Then I'll change the shooting mode to single, so that it doesn't shoot multiple photos when I hit the trigger. And then I'll change other settings such as ISO, aperture, and shutter. Then change your focus to manual and you are good to go. I wanted to create a smooth looking hyperlapse, so I planned out about 100 steps from the start point all the way to the end point, so that afterwards in post I can make a 2-4 to four second edit of this hyperlapse. The first thing you need to do is find a subject and a spot on that subject that you're going to focus in on in every photo. In this example, I'll be using the middle of the front facing clock on this clock tower and line that up with the middle of my grid. So I'll snap my first photo take a step forward and snap again. Do this about 100 times or more depending on how long you want your high lapse to be. Also make sure that the part you are targeting is always in focus. So don't forget to adjust your focus as you get closer and closer. Once you are done, load up Final Cut Pro 10. Drag all of your photos into the project timeline. I have roughly around 98 photos in this timeline. With all of it highlighted, right click on one of the photos and click on change duration. Then you are going to type in the number 1. This should change the duration for all of your photos. It will probably look really choppy at this point as we still need to add stabilization. In order to do this you need to export your video first then bring it back into Final Cut. Choose ProRes 422 when you are exporting so that the quality is still very high. Now start a new project or just delete the photos on your current one. Now drag the newly exported file into the timeline. Next, head over to the inspector tab and place a check mark beside stabilization. Change the stabilization setting to smooth cam. Here you'll have a few options to play around with to make your clip smoother. This will be different depending on your footage. For what I shot, these were the settings that worked the best for my clips. Don't be afraid to play around with the numbers or even the stabilization types. Highlight the clip then head over to the retiming options tool and select custom. Change the duration of the clip until you're happy. Add some color grading to make it pop and some sound design to bring it to life. When you're done all of that, highlight it all, right click and create a new compound clip. Copy the clip and paste it beside the original. Then in the retiming options tool, select reverse and clip. Now copy these two clips and paste it as much as you want. Another way and probably the easier and better way to do this is using a plugin called Stabilizer 2.0 by Pixel Film Studios. It will smooth out and stabilize your hyperlapse in seconds. Once you have your photos loaded and shortened, highlight all of it and create a new compound clip. Drag the Stabilizer 2.0 plugin on top of your new clip. Click on Track Editor, then move the control points around your target. Then hit the right arrow to start the process. When it is done, click on export data. Now your clip should come out a lot smoother and better stabilized. Repeat the process, add your sounds and color grade, then copy and paste it beside the original. Reverse the clip in the retiming options toolbar. Then copy and paste both clips over and over until you're happy with the final outcome. Thank you to Storyblocks.com for sponsoring this video. 
If you guys love that hyperlapse look but don't have time to shoot one for your project, you can always just download one from Storyblocks video where you can use it for any type of project you have, whether it's for personal or a commercial project. Quite honestly, Storyblocks has been a huge lifesaver for me. I use a bunch of their stock footage for my big projects, such as a documentary I released called The Ultimate Goal. I was on a time crunch so I missed shooting a few clips for the documentary, but I was lucky that Storyblocks had what I needed. If you guys want to try it out, make sure to click on my link in the description down below. It's my time in my prime, this the prime time, pretty content. Are you content? No nonsense, just a go-getter on a car quest. Hey.